Subscribe to Book Santos or you'll have bad sex for seven years. Hello and welcome to the Book Santos channel. Um, we are doing a very special Valentine's Day episode with the queen of modern romance Ooh. on YouTube. <laughs> I'll take that. These are Mangal Das. Hi. I'm Sharon. I'm Anuya. And I'm Lisa. <laughs> I missed my cue because she already introduced me. Thank you for that yes. amazing introduction. And today we're going to be talking about female sexuality and our favorite books that helped us understand this very sort of wonderful and exciting topic. Mm. And you should all subscribe to Lisa's channel. It's youtube.com slash Lisa Mangaldas. One for some reason. Lisa Mangaldas one. One. Who <laughs> knows? The first one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't choose that, man. YouTube gave it to me. So there's only one Lisa Mangaldas on YouTube. You'll find it. Her channel is teaching India about modern romance. Mm. So that is a great thing. And uh, which is why we're going to talk about books that have helped us explore female sexuality. And our guides in life have been gynecologists, life experience, and <laughs> books. <laughs> <laughs> gynecologists who are like, are you married? Which is code for... Are you sexually active? And I want to be like, honey, I've been married since I was 19. <laughs> I've been married to several men and I've tried different marital things. And yeah. I got married last night as well and it was really good. <laughs> now are you going to look at my vagina and tell me if I have a yeast infection or no? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for putting it out there. <laughs> <Anuria. laughs> but Lisa, before we deep dive into the books, deep dive, <laughs> now everything is going to sound dirty. Um, Introduce yourself to our audience, please. <laughs> oh my God. Um, sorry if I've been super awkward all this time. It is, it is hard still, even though I consider myself super, um, you know, chill about these topics. I feel like when you have to talk to a camera about sex, even as the most progressive person I know on the topic. We are very middle awkward. class. It can be yeah. <laughs> middle class. So we're, we're, it's a journey we're on ourselves. Um, but so basically I do a bunch of things. Um, uh, I'm a TV presenter and I do a bunch of, you know, more mainstream media work as well. But on YouTube, I have this channel about love and sex and romance and trying to provide a female perspective on issues that Indian women aren't encouraged to talk mm -hmm. about. Um, so, yeah. So, should we get into it with the books? I yeah. Because so I can talk and talk otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's good. So, why don't we all start by talking about the first books that we remember reading that gave us some sort of an insight on female sexuality? Yes, um, so I actually remember reading The Handmaid's Tale mm -hmm. when I was 12. I what? Think. Yeah, I know, it was a bit early. But my English teacher, I was like a very nerdy kid, and I, and I was always reading, and just I genuinely enjoyed reading. And, and I think I had a great English teacher at the time who noticed that I genuinely loved reading, and so he would um, suggest books that might interest me, if, mm. even if they weren't on the curriculum. Mm -hmm. he, and so The Handmaid's Tale. Mm -hmm was um, what I was told I should read. And I think it was the first time I uh, became aware of the idea that women's bodies are political, you know, yeah. or the idea of like controlling women's bodies as a political and um, sort of, you know, and a reproduction is something mm. that is a currency mm -hmm. mm. And, and those ideas. And I think I was, it was, it was too young maybe to yeah. understand the, 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 com the full scope of that book. It's an, in, it's, you know, an incredibly mm. imaginative mm -hmm. and, complex book in, yeah. in the sort of fictional dystopian universe that it creates. But it was definitely a great introduction to feminism. Wow. So did you did you even grapple with uh, what it was trying to say at that age of 12? Like, what was your first uh, you impression. Know, impression of a yeah. book like that? Have you guys read it? Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched the show. I haven't, I haven't watched, watched the show. The show but I've sure, read the book. Yeah. But I, I felt like uh, even as a 12-year-old, when you... Um, read about you know how these women are mm. basically uh, prevented from having any autonomy or agency mm -hmm. oh, and that bodies, they're being yeah. controlled and used purely to have children mm -hmm. uh, that's i mean it, you know there's lots more in the book and there's all this religious symbolism and all kinds of things going on but that basic premise of these yeah. women have been completely shut down and mm -hmm. you know being used as vessels exactly yeah. i think that came through very mm -hmm. clearly mm -hmm. and and i think it just made me think about the privileges that I had mm. and what it would be like if I didn't and that there are countries where women don't mm. have, you know, the basic rights and privileges. I mean, that, that exists do. in some form of the other right now also, right? Where exactly. a lot of women do not have agency, agency over their own bodies and they do exist as 
just you know child bearers for their husbands yeah. so yeah you're right we are all so privileged and let's not fool ourselves if society in its current format collapses ever the first casualty will be women exactly yeah, yeah. we've always been used even in historical literature that we've read growing up uh, women have always been used as things to barter yeah and that has always been a case i think it's it's um unfortunate that women uh, are often or has historically have been sort of um, imagined as if they are mm. either you know completely without mm -hmm. sexuality mm -hmm. or only yeah. for you know the madonna yeah. or the whore that sort yeah. of like yeah. Yes, uh, that's true. dichotomy yeah. and i think that that it's you just neglect such a wonderful range of possibility when you imagine women as as either or right yeah. even though there's nothing wrong with the virgin or the whore mm. you that's there's just so much more to female True. sexuality than that i feel like women are denied that complexity for the most part but things are changing mm. there are lots of Hopefully. great books out there that um sort of take you through the adventure that is female sexuality it is an adventure isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it is a great adventure <laughs> and we've read, oh man <laughs> i'm glad we've all had lots of good yeah. sex <laughs> oh, um <laughs> वेर <laughs> 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 That that doesn't sound very, I know, wholesome. Really? Yeah, yeah did you know. Did you not ever have like pets or anything? No, <laughs> no, I didn't have pets. And you know how it is. You watch kissing. A kissing scene comes on TV, and your parents are like, no, 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 no. And uh, this was when I was eleven, I think, when I read Cain and Abel, and that's how I learned. And mm. uh, I think the first time I remember actually like, like a book that taught me about female sexuality was I think Madame Bovary. Mm. So oh, yeah. So that yeah. was when. That was when I was like, oh, क्या कर रही है, you know, like, लोग क्या कहेंगे, you know, and this was what 1856 that he 18 something he 1800s, released, yeah, yeah, in the 1800s he released it. So Madame Bovary is about a woman uh, tired of like uh, her village life who gets married to a doctor, realizes that marriage is even more boring, and then steps out of marriage to constantly sort of like she's looking for something she can't find the answer to, and her way to find it is through men hmm. and of course she is there for using her sexuality as a weapon and ultimately that leads to her ruin obviously because mm -hmm. <laughs> she can't use her sexuality as a weapon and then like have a happy ending not, not in the not 1800s not in a book written by a man yeah not in a book written by a man <laughs> and finally enough there it is yeah it had it was sued for obscenity of course because a woman is taking control of her own body hmm. book was considered obscene obviously yeah yeah, yeah. so that was all the words happen in the vagina <laughs> correct in lot of the classics there isn't even with empowered female characters there isn't much sex yeah so there's a lot of feeling feeling and passion and uh, touching yeah but like there's no explicit you know and longing sexual. <laughs> yeah longing bahut hota hai my longing. god oh <laughs> और शादी के बाद ही करते चुमा छाटी आई थिंक जेन ऑस्टिन तो नेवर लाइक शी वाज लाइक इट इज द फर्स्ट यू विल गेट मैरिड इन लॉन्गिंग इज कोड फॉर लस्ट एक्चुअली दैट्स व्हाट आई हैव रियलाइज्ड सो आई रिमेंबर पिकिंग अप अ बुक कॉल्ड रिबेका बाय डैफनी डू मोरियर एंड इट इज दिस आइकॉनिक लाइक रोमांस नोवेल करेक्ट अगेन इट वाज रिटन सम टाइम इन द 19th सेंचुरी एंड 19th सेंचुरी इंग्लैंड व्हिच वाज अगेन वेरी हो ये सेक्स हो सो इट इट वाज बेसिकली That's the book that introduced me to clitoral orgasms. Oh my Ooh. god! There was so much of that in that book. I'm like, okay, ye kya? Okay, we're sharing. Ye kya cheez hai? Yeah, I gotta write this down. What's this book called? I haven't read it. That was pretty cool, and I remember. What was the title of the book? Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca by yeah. Daphne du Maurier, and it was again like about a woman in in 19th century England who's and so mm. when you are 13 years old and you in a convent school and you're reading this book in the library, you're like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> look down again 
वन मारेगी हमने कहा सिस्टर ओलीन इट्स फनी हाउ दे विल रिमूव द स्वीट वैली हाई बुक्स देयर वाज नो स्वीट वैली हाई देयर वाज नो रिबेका ठीक है या देयर वाज नो मिल्स एंड बोन्स नो नो ऑल ऑफ दैट वाज बैंड बट रिबेका वाज देयर बिकॉज़ रिबेका वाज क्लासिक लिटरेचर सो या वेल आई एम ग्लैड इट वाज देयर दो इट वाज या इट टॉट मी अ लॉट new skills well they're worth acquiring i have to say i think um that women aren't encouraged sufficiently to explore their own pleasure and feel yeah. entitled to pleasure true, true. you know i feel like uh, men are brought up to believe that they should just be born knowing how to pleasure a woman and yeah. women are brought up to believe that men are responsible to give them pleasure yeah. you know it's like i feel like just the way people believe women should just be born knowing how to cook yeah men should just <laughs> yeah. be born knowing how to give a woman an orgasm and so then she deposits the sort of uh, process of her pleasure on just the quality of the skill level of her lovers mm-hmm. and that's so un- un- that's unfortunate and because unfair. honestly the female yeah. body is capable of so much pleasure that's true but if that's you true. don't if you haven't explored it yourself it's it's hard for someone else to be the gateway to your pleasure right yeah like, absolutely I mean, it, it works better i think if you instruct the guy um tell him what to do just <laughs> books also life advice yes, yeah yes. <laughs> but you know i think um speaking of like uh sex in books or the lack of it or you know i feel like um erotica never does a great job no. of of um right. of sort of describing sex but i think there's a lot of non fiction mm-hmm. around female sexuality that's quite quite good and so is there any uh, interesting book that you picked up in the last like say few years that you know was eye opening for you you know i eye opening <laughs> several actually and I, with non fiction though i am guilty of sometimes not reading the whole book and so um i but i feel like in terms of just uh, as a woman trying to understand my own sexuality mm-hmm. and desire and you know the discourse on this topic there's lots of not i feel like it's a uh, topic that lends itself very well to non fiction yeah mm-hmm. and that there's a lot that one can i feel like it's a genre that's interesting to read non fiction can has this like sort of a bad reputation for being boring mm-hmm. dry um, that mm. was a weird adjective to use <laughs> <laughs> books on female sexuality i'm moist dry <laughs> yeah exactly um oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i have not made a single that's what she said or title of a sex tape joke and so i should get an award <laughs> i thought it was really helpful to read um chimamanda adichie's book called we should all be feminists we yeah, should all be feminists it's a great book i mean i feel like hopefully you've already read it but if you haven't you should it's a great sort it's of like gateway so sh- for someone small. who's interested in the just even just the topic of gender equality men Absolutely. and women not yeah. just women mm-hmm. should mm-hmm. read that book just tell our viewers a little bit about the book i mean uh, you know she had a ted talk that's uh, that became very popular with the same title and then Beyonce used a few lines from that TED talk in a song. Oh. And so I think that book particularly became even I love Chimamanda she's like the most amazing woman. She's a Nigerian author. Um So do we. Yeah, she's so just she is magnificent. Yeah. She and she's so unapologetically feminine oh. even though she's a feminist and I think that uh in tr- in sort of always proving and and talking about the fact that women don't have to be one thing in order to prove they're not the other thing and mm-hmm. you know not getting caught up in i feel like unfortunately even feminism can sometimes make women believe that they have to reject all of the trappings of of femininity, of femininity. femininity and all yeah. that agree with you and yeah. and she she kind of talks about how it's so much bigger than that and how gender equality is a human issue not mm-hmm. uh just a woman's issue mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. and and how men stand to benefit so much also from That's a gender true. equal That's world true. In fact this is a book that uh, I mean we've spoken about it so many times on our other episodes also and it's definitely a book that all men should read as well yeah. Yeah. I think also the language is really simple and it's, it's not like convoluted this week, guys it's yeah it's a really <laughs> thin, <laughs> thin thin book and read all of her books I love Americana she, I love oh, yeah. her books I've read all of her books if race <coughs> um sexuality gender everything um, mental illness Migration, history all kinds of everything you should agree yeah. with yeah. chimamanda she's, she's a very amazing. arrived author and that's yeah. that's really good and you probably have read already yeah. yeah no it's it's a good recommendation no no for sure um we saw her before but yeah. there are always new people who are joining us this time yeah so. yeah. yeah yeah read everything by chimamanda goes the yeah, and look up her t- i love how she talks as well she's so eloquent yeah. look up her talks and she has well. a very hot nigerian accent what ah, yes <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm in love from. with her yeah. she's so hot as well she's really really beautiful um but no so crush on her fully fully oh my god from the moment i saw her 
Um, but what did I want to say? Oh yeah, I, also what that book made me realize was that often women are blind to their own oppression because it's been... Conditioned. Yeah, we're conditioned for so many centuries yeah, and from man. such a young age yeah. that we don't even notice we're being oppressed I anymore and we perpetuate yeah. Yeah. our yeah. own oppression. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah we, do. You know, we do, we do. We are the ones who are carrying the legacy of oppression forward. It's which hard. Is, hard you know, which it. is a great segue into the next book that I want to talk about because it comes uh, neatly attached with an issue that we can discuss which is Aziz Ansari's Modern Romance. Yes, I, I like that. Yeah, and uh, that was uh, that's a really fun book because it uses Aziz Ansari. So he does his, it practically uses his entire special about romance and backs it up with data yeah. and research, which he did with the help of a sociologist, a sociologist Do we have named to Eric Kleinenberg. Yes, I want to. The uh, Me Too allegation against Yes, Aziz. yes, yes. I want to talk about it because, because I, I think it fits. That was disappointing. Yeah, I feel like it fits this narration of us um, for Talking about oppre uh, uh, oppressing ourselves. It's like women are, because when, I, when that broke, when that news broke and everybody was talking about it online, naturally I kept my mouth shut because you can't go against what uh, people are saying on Twitter or they will massacre you. So you keep your mouth shut and you keep your opinions to yourself. And I saw a lot of older feminists speaking up against the woman and a lot of younger feminists speaking up for her and everyone was either pro Aziz or against Aziz and nobody was actually sitting and understanding her. What, what is what this? Is the Why thing? did this yeah. happen? Yeah. Why was, because mm. Aziz and it wasn't, I believe, of course, and people can uh, oppose me, that he wasn't wrong, that he was a product of the same system that the girl was a product of, where she couldn't extricate herself easily and say no, because when you're in a situation like that, you tend to take the easiest way out. So you're like, if I give him a blowjob and uh, he comes, then I can pack my bag and I can run. As opposed to putting yourself in an unpleasant situation where you're like, if I say no and he gets angry and there is a consequence of this, which I can't control, then what will I do, mm. right? I would like to know what you guys think. But I feel like he didn't realize that he should have, that she wasn't playing, mm. that she was trying to tell him that she wasn't interested. And she didn't realize mm. that she could get up at that moment, say no and walk out. Yeah. Because we are conditioned always to please the man, yeah. no matter what situation we find ourselves in. True. And that is our ticket to get out of that situation. Mm. Like quickly finish it and run. Mm. But what do you guys think? Okay, I'll go first. Because <laughs> <guys> like, <laughs> I just want like the troll brigade, you know, man. There is no troll brigade on Books on Toast. This is a happy, friendly channel. We are about books. <laughs> we, disagree, <laughs> we disagree all the time with our yeah. readers and they put up coherent arguments and we listen to them, so don't worry. <laughs> it's just one of those topics which is so... <laughs> She's like, I'm not ready. I'm not going to say, okay, it's all ready. You don't have to. You don't have no, to no, no, no. You know, I just feel like the whole... Um, although I, I feel like I just interrupted you from saying your, your thing. You said you were going to go. No, I'm, I basically uh, wanted to just say that, I mean, there are arguments pro and against yeah, it. I mean, yeah. it's clearly not a case of abuse or yeah. molestation, yeah. but it's about consent. Yeah. And I think that is where it got lost. And yeah. I think before Noya came in, Lisa and I were talking about the show that we just binge watched on Netflix sex called Sex Education. How is it? So which is good. phenomenal. Yeah. Mm, it is it's a it. show for young people uh, to really understand what their bodies are going through. And I really like how there's this one episode in it in which they talk about consent mm. and uh, where this kid is saying, you know, no, no means no. Mm. And the other kid is like, yeah, no means no, but does it mean yes? And he's like, no, 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 no means no. <laughs> and the other kid is like, okay, no means no, but maybe someday it can mean yes. He's like, you know what, no, no means no. Okay. Like that back mm. and forth, back and forth went on. And, and I think we are guilty as societies for perpetuating it in all our pop culture. Yeah. If the girl says no, 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 she's not, she wants to be quoted. She wants to be, you know, chased a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. She will eventually yeah, say That yes. is what we're teaching our, we teach our men. And yeah. women. And yeah. women. Unfortunately, and women. we teach men yeah. and women yeah. that. Yeah. That so you have to pretend to be demure and he has to chase you to get, to get what he ultimately wants. Which is also the plot lines wants. of all romance novels. Like all Mills and Boons, everything is about power. It's yeah. a power structure. And yeah. I think what happens is like in, in Aziz Ansari's case, I mean, 
it, it wasn't blatant sexual abuse or anything or even molestation. But I think it was about, you know, her not really putting her, you know, point foot down, foot down yeah. and being a little embarrassed by it. Yeah, I think that's absolutely. what the narration yeah, did not. Yeah. And he not picking on the cues. So yeah. it was like a date that went wrong, but but that's I mean, what I'm saying, right? We are conditioning. It is conditioning. It's yeah. conditioning. And it's yeah. a complete failure on conditioning's part. And I think we should empathize with both of them and, and yeah. make men realize that, look at the woman's body language, you idiot. She's not playing. I mean, <laughs> she's trying to tell you that she's uncomfortable and like move away if at the slightest hint. Of I course, this is very yeah. tricky, though. It's, it's very tricky. tricky I mean, body language is also very hard yeah, to read. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. 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 No, I feel like we should encourage young people, when we're educating young people around sexuality and, and consent and things, I think it's important to emphasize that very clear and explicit consent yes. should be sought. Yes. You know, yeah. why, why rely on cues? Yeah. In this day and yeah. age, even though it might sound unromantic or whatever, ask a, you know do yeah. you want this can i do this these yeah. are good questions and yeah. and no means no yeah and you know? talk and, about and these for women things. and men i feel like women also have been conditioned to pretend and yeah. yes, beat around exactly. the bush yeah. and be coy yeah. be and, coy you know, be like, <laughs> and women should be direct as well i just think like communication is is yeah. key. communication is key i and think this you know when you spoke about it um taking responsibility for my own orgasm is the thing that changed my life because exactly nice. this right where i'm like <laughs> Men, men are told that they are responsible for my pleasure, and then I'm like, but he has no idea what to do. How will yeah, I yeah, that's tell him what to do? So or tell her what to no, do? No, or show, <laughs> or like you, you take, uh, you take control of what's happening in that situation, yeah. and that's when you'll start having fun. And you know and the other the same thing though, about here. consent is that at any part of the process, you can stop wanting to yes, do something. So it's yes. good to yeah. to actually seek consent several times, yes. not just once. Yes. Yes. You know, you can consent to a kiss and then not consent to anything, anything for follow up. That's yeah. also yeah. okay. Or you can, cons I mean, it basically, even in the midst of something, you can choose that you don't want to do yes. it anymore. So it's important. And even men, you know, can choose can that choose they don't that. want yes. to do something. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like men are, you know, hypersexualized as if like yeah. you're, you're, yeah, you're you not a clean. real man if you don't want sex or if you don't like sex or if you're not ready what? for sex or whatever. <laughs> men also, I think, should be, um, you know, a granted the emotional yeah. sort of complexity around sex where it might not necessarily be something they always want. Yeah. yeah. It's very complicated, guys. It is complicated. <laughs> so coming back to modern romance, now that we've yeah. got the Me Too allegation out of the way, uh, modern romance is a really, is a, sh is, is a really fun book because it brings you up to speed with dating as it is now all over the world. Mm. And you'll be surprised by how much it differs um, in different parts of the world and also in also terms right. of time mm. and how the internet has completely changed the landscape, not mm. for the better, but probably for the worse. Uh, and he backs it up with data about things like in 1935, people used to just get married to the person nearest. So like the number of people mm -hmm. who married within the same neighborhood Versus now when we are all like, oh my God, he used bad grammar. I don't want to have sex with him. You know, what? bad grammar. Oh, bad grammar. Yeah. So like, oh no, who likes Lord of the Rings? They're so bored. You know, that's how we reject mm. people now mm. because something in their profile is annoying. Mm. And that has, no, it's not helping anybody, just FYI. Mm. And he talks about how in places like Tokyo, people are not getting married anymore. Yeah, I'm Tokyo has a, yeah. Japan has a major sex crisis. People, people are not having sex, sex with human beings anymore. It's That's really so weird. Sad. Everybody thinks that in Japan, everybody's having sex because it's so, all of those Over, yeah. panty uh, vending machine stories. But like the no, landscape is yeah. completely different yeah. where the government is concerned. So yeah. I thought it was very interesting in terms of it educates you on the trends and also it shows you, it holds a mirror to your own habits. Yeah. As a modern data, data, modern in data. urban structure, what you're doing and how silly some of the things that we do are, are and of course it's Aziz Ansari, so it's very funny. Yeah. So I really liked it. Mm. I would recommend it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so there's a, 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 a very similar to Anoya's uh, recommendation of modern romance about dating in the 21st century. There is Ira Trivedi who had written a book uh, similar, not similar, but I think there's a parallel the there context. for the Indian context called uh, 
India and love, marriage and sexuality in the 21st century. Nice. And it's not a very comprehensive uh, research uh, that she's done actually for the book, but I think it gives you a fair overview of all the things that we already assume to be sort of true about in dating in India mm. in the modern era. Mm. Like people are migrating more, mm. people are more educated, people are more aware and hence their demands of each other for gender and sex is that much higher. So she talks about all these, she encapsulates all these trends and also um, the rise in arranged marriages uh, is more than ever before because people are in fact becoming more doubtful of their own abilities to make the right decisions when <coughs> it comes to finding the right partners because there's so much pressure from different mediums. Wow. Earlier it was only the medium of your parents, right? Human yeah. medium. Yeah. Now there is the uh, pressure of professional success. There is also the uh, pressure of, you know, keeping the online appearance together, right? Correct. Like constant couple goals, dating goals, marriage yeah, goals. Yeah. Are you hitting those milestones Correct. and things like that? Yeah. That is putting a very strange amount of pressure on younger people so to get married. Like, they're like, hey, yaar, I can't do this. You please like, and, and people are dating more, but they're still going back to arranged marriages because it's more. I Fascinating. It's very fascinating. Why marriage is such an objective for people. I don't and it's true, like, if you look at your Instagram feeds, right, or whatever, social media feeds, in the last 10 years, say, like, it's, 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 it's like, it's like uh, you go, it's like a factory made product, right? Like by age 25, some people are married. By age 28, people are having babies. By age whatever, whatever. Like these, these are these typical milestones that Correct. people are hitting. Yeah. And it's like... But that was true you would, in all ages. The thing is that you would assume that in modern society, uh, things would evolve to a much more progressive level, at Correct. least in our heads, right? Yeah, Where yeah. you have more opportunity of your own say. Hmm. But it's... Ulta is still happening. We live in a very, very, I think India has always been in that weird cusp of, you know, push and pull between tradition and modernity. Yeah. And it's really coming uh, to pass on social media, especially with facts like India has more amount of people that are under the age of 25. India also has like a really high internet penetration, right? So India's first uh, like, you know, uh, touch point of internet is through their smartphones. There's a whole generation that is skipping computers. So they are just accessing all this information about themselves and their identity and news in a very weird filtered manner, right? And of course, I mean, if you look at our movies and look at our pop culture, everything is telling you the same thing that we are really a generation or we are a society right now, which is going through extreme transitions, but we are more in some cases, we are more backward. <laughs> in some cases, we are more I think we are two steps forward, it's one very, step backward, two yeah. steps forward. Like, Constantly, in a way, should look at strange. online dating and the whole popularity of it all over the world. In a way, everybody is becoming a bit of an arranged marriage type of society because suddenly people are putting their credit scores on their online dating profiles and you're looking at, did yeah. they go to Harvard like yeah. I did? Yeah. Do they make more than X whatever, $100,000 yeah. a year, etc.? Even in countries where it was not traditionally, uh, you know, you don't compare matrimonial profiles and stuff. But I feel like in a weird way by picking people based yeah. on, and most often, statistics. On a, you know, you, you have a racial, age, profession, Filter economics, the guerra, yeah. Uh, yeah. Filter kind of like, mind, yeah. yeah. And so then a dating site allows you to exactly. act on those yeah. very sort of primitive Impulses, selection point correct. exactly you know? things yeah. that you've been taught to think about when choosing so in a, a weird mate. way I feel it's like making it hip in fact <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very strange in a weird way i feel like we're all becoming like more arranged marriage globally yeah if you think about the correct. essence of arranged marriage yeah. right he has yeah cows i have goats now we have both you know i mean it was an economic <laughs> marriage was an economic arrangement historically that's true, right that's true there's a bar to technically a bar. in a in a society where women are working and making their own money yeah. technically there is no need for marriage in a society where there is contraception and women are making their own money the basis for marriage becomes completely uh, redundant yeah. right yeah. it was marriage occurred because people were so preoccupied with paternity. Who is the father of the son, yeah. basically? Yeah. It was the only way to ensure by making everybody, this is my wife and none of you can touch her and now we have cows and goats. <laughs> that was the the basis of marriage. So I, it just actually surprises me that so many young people, even though they're economically independent and have access to pretty much everything they want and all of that, still doing this. Still <laughs> not seek that validation of the yeah. court or the yeah. country yeah. or whatever, like live together. Because, but then again, conditioning, right? We've all been taught that, Dil to bagale sabne dekhi hai. Kya hai 
everybody. There to is me, someone like made weirdly... one, the one, the one. But it's this like Neo the... is going to come and the... pull you out of the matrix mm. if you I get know, married. <laughs> but like the, just the patriarchalness of the <laughs> yes. idea of yeah. marriage and the you know idea that you own each other and the rings and the dad giving you away. Or... But even historically, I mean, you know, unfortunately, because violence against women was pretty much the norm. Prevalent, yeah. Every it's, it's, it's a weird a fact and hard thing. to get yeah. to terms with it, but the men you like will have been assholes to other women. And yeah. it's just, I don't know, I'm dealing with that. Yeah. And the book I would recommend, <laughs> uh, that I was about to recommend, is Cyber Sexy by Richa Kolpati. Yes. You guys have had yes, her on the yes. show. We talked about this book. It's a great book. Yeah. Yes, that is true. It's a great book. She talks about porn and um, online dating and using the internet to fuel your sexual life. Uh, in the 21st century and, and women taking control of their own sexuality yeah. via the internet and and it's a, it's a good book because everything that we've discussed so far has been heteronormative mm. so uh, in cyber sexy what she genuinely tries to do is she makes it very intersectional she makes it different classes uh, ma male female both voices uh, disab people with disabilities um, uh, people with um, varied sexual interests and not just hetero, uh, cisgender heterosexuals, but also like asexuals, for example. And so she gets a lot of different perspectives mm. under that one umbrella of cyber sexy and how people are using the internet to navigate their Lovely. sex lives. Yeah, mm. and of, it's a very funny book. Mm. Like That's again, great. yeah, it's such a funny book, and I was so pleasantly surprised that a woman who's not a comedian has written a book about sex and pornography in the 21st century in India. Mm. And uh, it's it's also a funny book, and nobody has banned it. <laughs> nobody has it's a great book, and and also I think at the heart of the book is this conversation around consent. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it also asks the question of what is pornography and why are we so unanimous in the idea that it is bad? Yeah, and that not all porn is bad, but at the heart of what is good or what is bad, or what should be allowed and what shouldn't be allowed is consent, right? Mm. If something was non-consensual, it is bad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But if it wasn't, if then it was consensual, yeah. then, then who's to judge, right? So I feel like those are, I mean, it raises really interesting questions and has very intelligent arguments. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and it makes you also question your own biases mm. and your and how we tend to judge other people's sexual deviancies or, you know, as which is a problematic phase, phase in itself mm. where <clears throat> you have to put aside, you don't, don't think about BDSM as, Wrong. Wrong or like, ooh, like out there or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, so. Or the fact that we've all grown up with using homophobic slurs. Mm -hmm. We've all done it at some point in yeah. our lives and now we're older and we know better and we understand, hopefully. hopefully. Mm -hmm. But she makes you look inwards and question your own biases and your own wrongdoings and then examining them in the light of this new information. So mm -hmm. that's why I really like that book because it's, it's packaged in this like funny book about sex, but actually it's so much information. So much more than that. Mm. So very good book. Mm. Will broaden a lot of perspectives. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm so I think these two Indian the Indian authors, Richa Kolfatte and Ira Trivedi, will give you like a full landscape of yeah. not just sexual desire but also dating and romance and things yeah, like that. Yeah, that I think yeah, gives a complete yeah. picture of where we are. Currently, <laughs> not where we are headed. Maybe. I'm looking for a modern romance LGBTQ because, you know, I'm curious uh, <clears throat> about that as well. And it, does it differ from all this heteronormative dating information that we're getting? I mean, I don't know anything. I'm completely yeah. in the dark. Yeah. So if you guys have any recommendations, please Please give. tell us, yeah. Because, because this was our first episode. We scratched the surface and we, mm. we spoke about cisgender heteronormative relationships, but... We'd love to read books. I mean, well, there is the uh, there's the classic Indian classic Lehaf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which is more romance actually. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that's more like uh, loneliness. It's more, <laughs> it is more romance, but it's also about again. I think all the things that we spoke about about women just taking uh, you know mm. control of their own sexuality and things like that, and also it's pre-independence. So I think that India was slightly more progressive or seemingly seems like because a lot of literature that came out during that time was on same-sex love. So there is this But one again, it was author. banned, no, for it obscenity. It was banned and all for obscenity because of the British. And yeah. then we have taken that legacy forward yeah. in life. But there's also this uh, author called Ruth Vanita who's written a lot on same-sex love in India. Mm. And she's talked about that <clears throat> in literature mm. uh, that was being written in regional languages 
in the pre-independence era. And there is this one uh, book called Girls of Riyadh by Raja Al Sanya. I don't know if you guys have read it. It's actually lauded as a chick, chick lit book. But there is about women in Saudi Arabia. So this book is banned. Globally, mm. it's banned. It's, mm. I think, not banned in India, but uh, anywhere which, any any country that has great relations with Saudi Arabia, it's banned there. So, of course, it's banned in America. <laughs> uh, but uh, the book is essentially the story of four women uh, <clears throat> from Saudi Arabia born to different classes of society, the, mm. from the richest to the poorest, and about them taking uh, their own sexual agency in their own hands. So, Raja Al Sanya actually wrote it like their version of Sex in the City, and this is also the time when a lot of the Sex in the City DVDs had made their way towards the Middle East. Yeah. So she wrote a book which was about modern Saudi Arabian women uh, and about how they were exploring their sexuality in this very, like, you know, curtailed society. And uh, there is this one story about this girl who is engaged to this guy to be married. And then there is this one period in which she can hold your hand, but he can't kiss you. Because if he does kiss you, then you have been soiled and hence he can choose to then reject you and not marry you and she doesn't know this so it happens to her and then eventually he starts ghosting her he's not man enough to say i don't want to be with you because oh i kissed you but uh, <laughs> which is complicated in its own way and but he says that oh i can't be whatever whatever, whatever. eventually he gets out of his life uh, out of her life and then she's uh, tarnished as this woman who's been oh now God. yeah but that's, I've seen, that's what it's it is, like, it's the madame boarization. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so sad. She's also madame ovari. <laughs> the bee. Uh, sorry guys, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Mm. But I haven't made any puns, no, did you notice? Yes, well yeah. done. <laughs> so surviving myself. this far. Yeah. Well, you, I think penetration came up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there any fiction that you guys have read uh, in that have, uh, mm. that has uh, helped in sex? And I know everything she writes. <laughs> Beautiful it is. Delta of Venus. Delta of Venus. There is this really cool anthology of short stories, essays, photographs. It's called uh, Sex by Granta. It's basically a magazine of new fiction writing. And uh, yes, it's a great cover. It, the cover is why I picked up the book, to be very honest. <laughs> I'm like, and this is when Landmark was there in Bombay, like a big Landmark store. I went and picked it up and I'm like, wow, I will read this. So it has uh, a lot of these really fun fiction stories, but again, it's more about love and romance. And how, mm. I mean, of course, you cannot like, I think, separate and which is why I think we don't have good erotica in general, because either the erotica is written by men yeah. or it's been written from a very depraved standpoint where mm. there is just sex and mm. there is no story, no mm. relationship. And this book, I think, at least gives you different perspectives. Mm. So it's a very cool like fiction anthology to pick up. And it's hard to write about sex, the actual act, yeah. without it sounding weird, silly, like silly, yeah, without it sounding trivialized, yeah, silly yeah. and trivial. I but don't know if I want to write it, I'd giggle a lot. Yeah, the <laughs> words are funny. The nipple is a really funny word. It is. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, it's very like they've designed it in such a way that you will not take it seriously when it's put down in, you know, in it's the written not, I word. I think it's a particularly difficult genre, erotica, yeah, to get right. Yeah. I haven't even read Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, I've read Fifty Shades of Grey. It's not good. But I, I think that nonfiction and sort of studies about sexuality yeah. and stuff are a more interesting genre in terms of reading about sexuality. And so I want to recommend actually one more book mm -hmm. in that genre. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think actually the author more than the book, Gloria Steinem, is another great mm. introduction to mm. feminism Sex. and yeah, female sexuality and <laughs> how political female sexuality desire and female bodies have, have mm. sort of been through history. And there was this book that Rupa, I think, published mm -hmm. in 2014 called As If Women Matter. It was like the oh, essential yeah, yeah, Gloria Steinem yeah, reader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think she was best friends with a sociologist called Ruchira Gupta. Okay. And so Ruchira oh, they collaborated. They've kind of like, I mean, it was, it was many of Steinem's essays, mm -hmm. but kind of packaged particularly for an Indian audience oh, in the amazing. context of all of the stuff that was happening post Nirbhaya. And, wow. you know, there was, amazing. I feel like in the last few years, like yeah. the Indian female consciousness has been galvanized into mm. like standing mm. up for itself yeah. like more than yeah. before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in that context, I feel like this is a great mm -hmm. set of essays to read because it makes you think about all of these things, you know, whether it's consent or the, how patriarchal ideas of yeah. love, romance, and marriage are, or, you know, pornography, all, all these topics, I think it'll really make you question your previously unquestioned biases. 
Okay, this one book I do want to recommend. It's an anatomical book. It's called The Story of V. It's the purple cover uh, by Catherine Blackledge. And it's, uh, she's a doctor. Um, she's a PhD in biochemistry of all. And she's not, a, not like an actual doctor. Biochemist. But uh, <laughs> she really talks about the representation of vagina in popular culture. That's which actually so cool. important. Oh my God. And she's talked about how phallic symbolism is everywhere. And you know, yes, we also yes. use like milder words like villi, you know. Yeah. But there isn't a milder word for vagina is like. But JJ, but that's yeah. thanks to Grey's but Anatomy. That's, yeah, yeah. But it's also like no. se like weird words. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I think like all those word. words are yeah. derogatory. Yeah. So I don't want to repeat them. Yeah. Erotica, yeah, the words are so how. Uh, hey, that's what. Yeah. I mean. So she talks about yeah. how com how problematic the uh, representation of the vagina is, and she also talks about something called the intelligent vagina which says that, you know, like anatomically what all is going on down there is a lot more complex than what is happening maybe in any other part of our bodies. And that mm. is the one thing we don't know enough about ever. And mm. we're, not, we're not even curious enough. We will only know about these things if we actively like seek the information. If say we have an mm. issue, you go to a gynecologist mm. or something is not right. We've never like really seek because it's also like a very internal organization, very intimate uh, organization. Organ. It's a very <laughs> internal organ. <laughs> <So> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's also <laughs> another book called Vagina by Naomi Wolf, which oh. is similarly informative. Okay. Um, and there's another book called The Wonder Down Under, oh, which is perhaps my favorite right. title. It's yeah. not about um, Australia. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, but great, great reading if you're interested in the vagina. Ironically, though, the vagina is not the vagina; it is the vulva, and the vagina yeah. is a part of it. It's ironic that we keep mm. calling. Yeah. I saw the trailer. Uh, yeah. The uh, vaginas, vaginas, when actually. It is not the vagina. Not quite the vagina. What is the vagina? It's a new play. What is the vagina by Sharon and Anuya? I want to recommend one last book. One last one last book, and I think it's different from whatever we've spoken about so far because it talks about the female body, and not just the body as a sexual being, but the kind of pressures that the female body goes to because it needs to conform to like societal beauty norms. And it's written by, it's called Hunger. And it's written by this Haitian-American author named Roxanne Gay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, 2017, it's a memoir. And she talks about obesi ob obesity. Obes. Obesity. <laughs> I'm worried. Punjabi happened. Sharon did this to me. Yeah, I did. So, <laughs> obesity. Huh. And she talks about how it's treated in the media as well as how the people around us are also, like, super concerned about women putting on even, like, but hers is particularly Pounds. in the context of being African American. Mm. Also, I, mean, I think that race plays a huge part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but um, the first like about fifty percent of the book focuses on her body, mm. Mm. and I, in fact, I didn't even realize she was an African American until she's mentioned having Haitian roots, and then racism comes into play. But she speaks more a lot about being a woman, mm. and she was raped as a twelve-year-old, like gang raped, and how that shaped her notion of her own body mm. and of herself of mm. a, you know of, of her person as a sexual being and how it shaped all the decisions she took mm. so she started eating in order to become because she's been taught that if you're fat you're left alone right men don't want you because you're not conforming to the yeah. body stereotype so she started eating in order to become invisible and then it became a it disease. became a yeah and then she started also of course allowing men to ill treat her body because she thought that that is all she deserved and it's such a and I mean it's a really it's very depressing I will not mince words it's not and it's an easy read in terms of like she's very very the words it's the words are not it's not she makes it very accessible mm -hmm. to readers okay mm -hmm. it's a very accessible book but it's a very depressing read and it really paints this picture of how obsessed we are with weight and with this Body image. Be body image and beauty standards and how much the media and advertising and even our own peers and family and All the time. Ye mat ho ho yeah, <laughs> and how much that affects us as sexual beings. Because we are constantly, when, when a man is looking at us, we are constantly thinking, he's going to look ugly. at my flaws. Yeah. I am ugly. Yeah. Why does he want to be with me? Yeah. Even though I don't, I have cellulite. Oh no, yeah. I have fat. I just want to recommend one one last thing, one last book. Too many books, I know. But this is uh, a really cool community called Bombay Underground, 
They also run this really cool thing called Dharavi Art Room. That's a community that we have supported in the past. And they build, uh, bring out these self-published uh, zines. So a lot of the work that they do is with uh, teenagers in Dharavi and uh, they get them to like talk about their issues in a creative manner. So one zine that they've just put out is called Periods. And it's really like, uh, you know, just the experiences of girls when they hit their first period and it's wow. in multiple languages. So the first That's thing they amazing. remember, you know, what happened to them, what happened in their families, if somebody was with a boyfriend or with, you know, their parents or what happened. It's, it's a really, really cool thing. You can pick it up. It's The link is in the description. And you should really support Dharavi Art Room. They're trying to build currently a school for kids in Dharavi who, where they can come and learn art and craft. And I think that's a really good thing to support. So do support that. They're also building a library. For yeah. the kids, they are, mm. they are accepting it's funds. Really I, have, I have given money to it. We all I have. I'm going to brag Me about too. it. I don't believe okay. in silent charity. <laughs> I, I mean, we and you should don't. also, because kids should read. Yeah. yeah. Okay. About consent. Yes. <laughs> and other things. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Anuya. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful <laughs> discussion on women and sex. And we could talk about this for hours. So you guys are actually lucky that this is only a whatever 30, 40 minute long episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're having sex, great. If you're reading books, great. Yes. Please, <laughs> please subscribe to our channel. Please subscribe to Lisa's channel. Uh, and leave comments in the comment section. Please tell us what you agree with, what you disagree with. You know we love debating and we love to hear contrary opinions. And also share this video because I think the more we speak about female sexuality in public, the better it is yeah, for humanity and society in general. In general. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Read more as well. And subscribe to Books on Toast. These guys are amazing. Yay! Yay! Hey. Go! 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 Go!